Okay, so it's the 1st of March 2019, which of course means we're going to talk about February 2019 solar stats here in the UK. It's been a kick ass month and I also got paid. Okay, so as usual, we'll start off with what the estimates were for February. So um, the estimates from the installer was that I would generate around 350 kilowatt hours of solar uh, in February. My estimates were 320. And if you remember, apart from last month, where I actually generated less than my, any of the estimates, the system tends to be generating somewhere in the middle. Um, so I was expecting around 330, 335 kilowatt hours was what I was kind of expecting and hoping for. However, the system actually generated an amazing 497.77 kilowatt hours. That is just amazing for February. I mean, that's like almost to October levels of generation. So spring is definitely here and I'm really looking forward to kind of, you know, this weather getting better. So if we look at kind of consumptions overall, so of that 497.77 kilowatts, I was able to self-consume 466.97 kilowatts, which meant for some reason I did export 30.8 kilowatt hours, which is quite a lot really considering I've got the power wall and the eddy and everything. And one of the reasons for that is really kind of unknown, but I saw it happening. So there was a few days where the power wasn't full and the eddy wasn't heating the water, but for some reason the system was exporting uh, constant, you know, over a kilowatt of energy per hour kind of out to the grid, which kind of didn't make sense. It kind of sorted itself out. I don't know why it was doing that, but it did do it, which is why we have this situation where, um, you know, 30.8 kilowatts got put back into the grid. As we kind of zoom through some of the, the calendar days, you will see that. I think it was like um, the 14th and the 23rd of February were days where that seemed to be happening. Um, in terms of consumption, um, it is quite high. I need to try to remember what it was um, last month, actually. So 910. Oh, it's actually slightly down on um, last month, which is interesting. So 910.76 kilowatt hours. 51% uh, of that I generated myself, the rest was imported. Now a couple of things that happened during February, uh, the weather has warmed up slightly, so I am still using the cave heater, but it's on much less. So it's obviously heating up much quicker and there isn't on. But for the last two weeks, so pretty much for half of February, I have had the Tesla Model S. So that is charging both from solar and a little bit on the economy four tariff in the evening. So that kind of accounts for uh, the consumption. It's gonna be interesting really as we kind of move into the summer. So I think I'm like, hopefully towards the end of March, that the heater won't be on at all. And this will really get a better understanding of what is my regular consumption gonna be like with the car and everything. And I still need to get a, a proper charger because I'm still plugging into the three pin plug and drawing a measly two kilowatts an hour, which takes a long time to fill a 75 kilowatt battery. So let's um, do what we usually do, have a quick um, jump through the month. So as you see at the beginning of the month, as expected, lots of uh, importing from the grid. Here's one of those examples where we can see here, even on the second, there's a large amount of green there and we exported six kilowatts. So for reasons unknown, I think there yeah, the power was full. I'm I think the eddy probably didn't really have much water heating to do because some heating would have happened from the gas whilst the heating was on. So this is where we start to kind of struggle a little bit where we've got a bit of um, lossing. Into the next day, really good utilization of the solar that worked out really well. Um, again, we're starting as, the, as we're going into the month we are getting a reasonable amount of production and we're kind of self-sustained from the topping up of the grid in the evening. Same kind of continues, pretty good. Onto the seventh. 
the 8th. Okay, here's another day. So on the 9th, we can see that, um, again, we had an export of nearly five kilowatts. So for some reason, parts of the system um, isn't meant to utilize that energy fully into the battery. Okay, so this is interesting to attempt. That looks like the first day really where the power wall uh, has been able to charge from the sun and sustain this all the way through the night. So you can see that very small blip uh, at the early hours of the morning at 1 a.m. If something happens, maybe the fridge kicked in slightly or, or, or something, and that kind of meant that, um, you know, we had that little spike. But for the rest of the day, everything's running from the power wall or from the solar. So that's fantastic. Then we can see though, um, by next morning, something's happening. So on the 11th, I'm just I think what day. No, so maybe I charge a Twizy or something because you've got that spike up to six kilowatts. Not quite sure what's happening there. Uh, 12th, again, the weather's not too good. Some good solar generation there uh, on the 13th. On the 14th is the day I collected the Tesla. So I was not here. So obviously the, the, the heating, um, looks like the heating probably was on. So left it on. Something's going on, but obviously we had a really kind of kick-ass solar day on the 14th. Um, and that's probably also why we exported a lot. Because if you look here in the evening or in the early hours of the morning, the power was fooled up um, off the grid, expecting to have the heaters on all day. And obviously that hasn't um, perhaps fully happened, which is why we've kind of had to end up exporting some. Okay, if we go through the next few days. I'm trying to see if there's any mega sign of when I started um, charging the car. So I think these days are when we're charging because the power will tends to draw somewhere between four and five and the car's pulling two. Um, so that's pulling some in. Okay, so this looks like another good generation day. So the power was powering us all the way through the night. It needs a little bit of a top up um, in the morning, but you can see the system generated 26.69 kilowatt hours um, that day, which is really good. And the power actually is doing a really good job of kind of predicting, I mean, based on forecasting what the weather's gonna be like, how much power needs to be put into the power wall and how much is gonna be solar generation. So we're not pulling needlessly from the grid. Okay, so here's, here's one of the days I mentioned, so the 23rd, you can see there, I was looking at the app at the time this was happening, and this is where we had the situation where for reasons unknown, we're pumping out to the grid and the power wall and stuff still could, could you know, it still had capacity for filling uh, and the water could be heated. So that was a strange day. Um, another not too bad day on the 24th. So nice, strong, consistent solar generation there. Look, that's a, almost like a perfect arc there. Kind of peaking out just about six kilowatts, which is fantastic towards the end of February. Um, again, we've seen some peaks there. Um, I think it probably was charging the Tesla a little bit there. I think I had to go somewhere, so that's up at the car to charge. Um, and look at this one. This is like what I'm hoping for in the future. Again, a little bit of blip in the early hours of the morning. Perhaps that might be a maintenance cycle or something on the power wall that so draws a little bit from the grid for balancing, but a perfect clear day and we've obviously hitting that peak of six in towards the middle of the day, I guess early, early, um, kind of late morning, obviously as the sun is going down earlier, but 34 kilowatts, fantastic. And again, on the next day, another kind of stonking day. So it really has been the last couple of days of February, a really good generation. And then it's kind of fallen off um, yesterday. So we've had to kind of pull from the grid. But yeah, really, really good. Um, so I'm really happy with that. If we look at um, some other statistics as well. So if we look at um, how much I've used the power wall in February. So 389 kilowatts uh, was put into the power wall uh, over the month of February. Some of that is obviously from the grid. Some of that is from solar, but um, I managed to then pull 349 
kilowatt hours of electricity from the power wall. So that rates worked out to be about 89 point something percent energy efficiency. So that's that's good because that's what they say. They say about 90 percent efficiency. So things are starting to operate much more like they should, which is fantastic. Um, and I'm just trying to see if we've got anything here from the information about the grid stuff. Okay, so in terms of um, the sources of energy to the house um, over the month of February, we had 35.5% uh, came from solar, 38.9% came from the power wall, and 256 came from the grid. So that's pretty damn good. And then if we have a really super quick look at um, the eddy, I know not a lot of that electricity went into heating water. So yeah, uh, we had 31 kilowatt hours of solar diverted to heating hot water. So there we go. I'm really, really happy and impressed with how well the system has performed in February. So that's fantastic. And to top it off, I also received my FIT payment uh, into the bank from Good Energy, £112.61. So that's my first feed-in tariff payment. So hopefully they continue to, to be good and help and assist um, with the system payback. So yeah, good month. I'm looking forward to March. If it's anything like February, it's going to be killer. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.